Hello everyone and welcome to another News Coulomb video and another plug side chat. In this video I wanted to talk about self-charging electric cars. Now for a lot of us electric vehicle owners it's a little bit frustrating when you hear people talk about oh well you wouldn't need to plug in at all if you put a solar panel on the top of your car or you know, why don't you just hook up a pulley to an alternator on one of the axles or, you know, whatever, have a wind turbine on the hood. And, you know, we're not talking about defying the laws of physics here, but it is possible to make electric vehicles in a way that they're essentially self-charging. So one of the issues with something like photovoltaic uh, cells, right? You put it on the roof or whatever. They will generate electricity. They will make your car uh, more efficient. However, even under ideal circumstances, current photovoltaic technology is limited to, you know, maybe 30, 35 percent efficiency at best. That's if it's ideally placed, ideally angled, and that rarely happens. So it's just not possible to produce enough power to make an appreciable difference, even if you were parked in the sun with a, a 30% uh, maximum efficiency in all the conversion losses. Basically, you have enough to recharge the 12 volt battery uh, in the vehicle after a day. However, if you do look at the actual numbers in terms of solar radiation, solar energy, the average surface area of a vehicle, the average car is hit by about five to six kilowatts of solar energy. And just based on its surface area, you know, of about 60, 70 square feet. If you were able to convert that at a high enough efficiency, you're looking at 15, 20, maybe as much as 25 kilowatt hours of energy on a sunny day. And even with conversion losses, even on relatively inefficient vehicles, that's enough energy to cover the average American's driving of about you know, 30 to 40 miles per day. So if you could find a way to capture even just a majority of the solar energy that hits an, a vehicle in the average day, an electric vehicle in particular, you should be able to convert that energy to electricity and recharge the battery to a point that the vehicle itself would hardly ever need to be plugged in. It actually makes vehicle to grid technology a lot more appealing as well because your car is essentially acting as a generator most of the time and you're able to feed that energy back into the grid, get paid for it be compensated for it. So anything that you're producing in excess, you, you become a net producer rather than a consumer, which is, you know, very important. And if more and more of us became net producers instead of consumers, it would be good for society overall, uh, not just your own individual finances. And one of the more effective ways of converting this energy would be some sort of a heat recovery steam generation. I've mentioned in other topics where you could transfer heat to essentially a steam system. And something like this, you'd probably even want to consider like a Pico heat recovery steam generation system. You're not looking at a huge amount of power. Like I said, maybe at most you're running at four, five, six kilowatts of uh, constant power being generated through a very small steam turbine. But you could pull that power. So even if your car is not directly in the sun, if the surrounding area is warm, if it's a warm, sunny day, you have all of that heat that you can transfer to, from the outside environment uh, or the inside of the car and feed it into this heat recovery steam generation system. Likewise, batteries, whether it's hot outside, whether you're driving, whether you're charging, having some sort of a heat exchanger or heat pump to pull that excess heat out of those batteries when you don't want it there, uh, that can also be fed in uh, 
to run this steam generator to to add efficiency and as you're driving along you know if for those of you who are bolt ev owners you know this your air conditioning on a warm day is going to take up about four to five to six percent of your uh, total energy usage even when you're driving at freeway speeds well again not only are you not getting penalized that four to five to six percent you're taking that energy and you're actually feeding it back into the system so your actual driving is four to five to six percent more efficient so there's huge recoveries and huge gains to be made all around and like i said for those who drive only 30 40 50 miles a day you might never actually need to plug your car in at all you might actually recover enough heat from the outside environment from the sun hitting your vehicle that you'd be able to run all of your personal transportation needs on a day-to-day -day basis so i think this is a really important technology that needs to be implemented for electric vehicles because it, it removes a huge amount of dependency, uh, adds self-reliance, uh, provides a, an income for electric vehicle owners who want to sell the power back or to run their homes, use their vehicle basically as a generator, even when uh, they're you know not driving it, when it's just sitting in the front yard or in the driveway or wherever. Um, I'd love to hear what you think about it. I, I know this sounds pie in the sky. And I mean, even some of the photovoltaics now, they're getting to a point where some of the experimental ones are far more than 30% efficient. And those in conjunction with this technology would also be a very, very powerful tool. So let me know what you think. Is this something that you'd like to see implemented in electric vehicles? Is it something that would actually maybe cover your regular daily driving needs if you were to recover 20, 30, 40, 50 miles of range a day just by parking your car in the sun. If you enjoy this video, please like and subscribe. It really does help out the channel and uh, thank you for watching.